Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar program, The Data Revolution, How Data is Changing the Procure-to-Pay Process, brought to you by Zykis, a leading software provider for source-to-pay automation solution. A few housekeeping items before we get started today. If you have any technical questions, please use the chat box or the Q&A panel on the right side of the screen and we will respond right away. If you have any issue with the audio, click on the phone icon which you see above the chat window to receive the teleconference information. If you're disconnected, you will have to log on again using the link and instruction provided in the original confirmation email. If you continue to experience difficulties, write to us at webinars at zykis.com. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. Please type your question in the chat box and enter the send button to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we would have our presenter answer those questions to you. If you're not able to answer all the questions, we will be sending the answers post-webinar via email. We would also provide you with the webinar slide decks and the recording of this webinar within a few days post this webinar. Our speakers for today are Richard Waugh and Sean Park. Richard is a VB corporate development at Zykis with an extensive background in B2B e-commerce. He was also co-founder of B2E Markets, one of the first SaaS sourcing suite providers, and later covered the supply management market as an industry analyst for the Aberdeen Group. Sean is principal and Sean is principal with Aquis Consulting Group and also head of procurement and strategic sourcing. With consulting experiences across US, Europe, Brazil, and Japan, Sean has helped numerous large and mid-sized companies with their procurement transformation initiatives and has helped clients develop unique and effective strategies to increase profits and improve overall operations. He has received his MBA from the Rotterdam School of Management at Erasmus University in the Netherlands. Before we proceed uh, with the topic of presentation today, I would request uh, Richard to give all our attendees a brief overview of Zykis. Thanks, Rohit, and welcome to everyone for the webinar today. I think we've got a great session and topic for you. And just to provide a little bit of context here very briefly, Zykus, we, we're a software provider, so a comprehensive and integrated suite of source-to-pay software. Um, covering both strategic aspects of procurement as well as operational. And when you talk about data, as we are today, it permeates both strategic and operational, and oftentimes the, the operational side of this equation, where, which is more transactional, will be the source of data, and in some cases the, the, sorts of, the source of data headaches that, that uh, a lot of you may be experiencing out there. And then the idea is on the strategic side that, that that's where you're going to consume that data and, and apply it for strategic benefit across sourcing and procurement. So we, we, we address this from, a, from an integrated suite of software tools um, in terms of external third-party validation of that effort by, uh, by reference here is the Gartner Magic Quadrant. So they put together a report on software vendors that provide suites of solutions and in the latest one, Zykus is listed in the leader's quadrant of that matrix with the highest ability to execute and the highest customer satisfaction. So that's the software-centric view of this market. And Sean, I'll, I'll turn it over to you to talk about uh, Aquis Consulting. Thank you, Richard, and thank you to everyone participating today. I wanted to start with a quick overview of Aquis Consulting Group. We help organizations solve business challenges that enable sustainable growth and healthy efficiency, and today we're going to focus on healthy efficiency. We do this uh, by not just designing strategies, but also helping our clients put them to work. And in fact, our slogan is think and do. Our headquarters are in New York City with offices in New Jersey, San Francisco, and next month in London. We've helped companies from multiple industries implement feasible solutions in over 70 countries. All right, so 
So today, our agenda, uh, we're going to start with a couple of stories of the pitfalls of poor data. Uh, of course, we can provide countless stories, uh, but wanted to present a couple of recent examples we've uh, witnessed. Next, we'll discuss how critical auditing of data accuracy is to the business and a process for doing so. Third, if you find after performing an audit that data accuracy is not acceptable, developing a case for investment in tools and technology, or for that, manual, uh, for that matter, manual fixes will be key. From there, we will turn it over to Richard from Zykus, and he'll start with some of the trends and benefits of implementing a robust spend management tool. He'll then provide uh, further details on how the Zykus spend analytics tool works, including the benefits of AI, or artificial intelligence. And finally, Richard will explain some of the details of the importance of getting data, uh, get data correct at the source versus retroactively doing manual fixes and how the Zykus system provides tools to do so. We'll then provide a quick summary of our key points and provide time for questions from the audience. And also, we will ask you a couple of questions uh, throughout the presentation that you'll see. All right, so let's get started with a couple of recent examples that we've seen of the pitfalls of poor data. First, let's start with why spend data management is complex. Uh, we've listed several spend fields above, but there can, of course, be many, many more. It's easy to forget how much data we're actually talking about. Large companies sometimes execute hundreds of thousands of purchases every month, each with its own set of data. Besides the obvious issues of human error, there's tremendous opportunity lost when the data isn't fully utilized. That said, clean and complete data can be a very powerful tool. So let's get started with uh, the, the first example. Um, for this uh, first example, uh, a global uh, mobile device and services category manager approached the CIO with sourcing strategies and recommendations based on faulty data. A year later, his replacement did the same thing, and fed up, the CIO refused to work with the sourcing group any longer. It's kind of tragic, really. Uh, this, the category managers weren't entirely to blame, though, because the accuracy of the company's entire spend data was off due to lack of intelligent systems and standardized efficient processes at the point of data entry, the classic garbage in, garbage out scenario. So here are a couple of symptoms of the problem. Europe was grossly, Europe's spend data was grossly understated because some countries had a policy of paying for devices and plans as an employee expense, which was not uh, captured in the system. U.S. spend data was overstated because charge reversals and rebates were not accounted for. And finally, APAC data was left out completely due to category managers' inability to collect and integrate data. And quite honestly, one of the quotes we heard was, uh, it, it's just too hard to get this data, so they left it out. So as a result, sourcing was cut out not only from the mobile device and services category, but almost every IT category due to the CIO's lack of trust. It took two years to rebuild that trust, and only after a P2P system was implemented and the data was shown to be accurate, or at least accurate enough to make decisions on. But let's go to another example. In this case, a company's data was inaccurately categorized in over 30%, that's right, 30% of all transactions. That's not a big problem if the inaccuracies are in the tail of spend, but the inaccuracies were distributed pretty evenly with some categories worth worse offenders than others. POs were entered by admin with limited training, and they didn't have any uh, cheat sheets or feedback you know, on how to correct the categorization. Additionally, parent-child mapping was not automated or even taken into account for that matter. So what was the result? A lengthy and resource-intensive data cleanse was required to fix the miscategorization, and even then the fix was only a one-time thing. Training mitigated some of the errors, but because a robust system to auto-assign auto suppliers to categories or at least limit the choice of categories did not exist, after one year, the error rate was still about 20%. And to add insult to injury, due to the lack of systematic parent-child mapping, negotiations were handicapped because the parent-supplier spend was not leveraged across categories. So with that, we wanted to open this up to a survey question and wanted to know 
if you have experienced significant lack of stakeholder engagement and or ability to influence spend due to poor uh, data uh, integrity, inability to allocate resources effectively or efficiently, missed opportunities to use alternative sourcing methods, or felt that you had not fully capitalized on savings opportunities due to lack of accurate spend data. So please note that you can check more than one choice, and we'll give you 30 to 60 seconds to respond, and then we'll discuss the results. So we have the results, Sean. All right. Well, a whopping 87% of respondents mentioned missed savings opportunities due to poor data accuracy and integrity. That, that's, a, that's a significant, significant figure. Um, I'm not surprised that lack of stakeholder engagement comes in second uh, with 47% of respondents saying this is a huge issue. And uh, Richard, do you have any other comments on that uh, result? Yeah, I think uh, th this does map with, with what we hear consistently in the marketplace, that it's, you know, really these are all issues and problems. It, it certainly um, really culminates at the end of the day in, in lost savings, an opportunity cost, if you will, um, that, that, that uh, really culminates from from these variety of symptoms that we see and yeah it's pr pretty typical I think and I guess the only uh, comforting thing I can pass along is for those who are experiencing it you know you're not alone all right so auditing your data to find out the level of your data accuracy is what we'll discuss next and prior to this, the uh, webinar today, uh, thank you to those of you who responded to our uh, pre-webinar survey. So a whopping 50% of respondents indicated that they believe they have significant issues with spend data, and roughly half of respondents said they're not doing anything about it or they're not sure if it's even being addressed. Interestingly, uh, budget and time are bigger barriers to action than budget, which was kind of a uh, surprising result given uh, you know, economic conditions and, um, you know, the state of procurement. It's kind of a surprising result. All right, so many, many sources, many inputs, many people entering data creates an environment for data inaccuracy. A P2P tool like Zykus could automate the manual data entry and produce custom reports and dashboards. So rather than spend their time tactically entering and organizing data, you know, often and imperfectly, like in our case studies, category and operational managers can invest their time rather than spend their time strategically, finding ways to improve the supply chain, reduce costs, and streamline processes. The point is you want to get away from management by spreadsheet if that's what you're doing right now. So the important thing here is where do you start? So to get the data right, every organization should perform periodic audits of their spend. You start with collecting internal and external data, then normalize that data, and then perform what we call a data mend. An audit is a great way to identify categorization errors, opportunities for process changes, uh, changes or data capture issues. We recommend conducting these every year for various categories, especially ones with many different purchasing managers or different types of items that could cause confusion. So starting with data collection, a one-time audit comparing vendor data with internal data from ERP, AP, and T&E systems and augmented by category, by category reviews with procurement and the business will help establish a, a baseline and determine your accuracy level. Next, you will, of course, need to normalize that data, meaning consolidate and cleanse the data before performing what we call a data mend, whereby null fields are eliminated, human errors are corrected, and transactions are manually categorized. One po uh, point worth mentioning is that the audit is a perfect time to evaluate the effectiveness of your category map. 
Having too many categories and subcategories can uh, produce meaningless, cumbersome data, while too few categories will provide little insight. So it's a good time to, to check to see if your category map really makes sense. So next we'd like to jump into another survey question. And this one asks whether or not you've assessed the effectiveness of your category tree and trained your requisitioners in the last 20 month, uh, 24 months or so. These are best practices and important to data accuracy and what intelligence you can glean from that, that data. Again, we'll give you some time to respond and quickly discuss the results in about 30 seconds. And Sean, I know as we're waiting for the results to come in, certainly 24 months in the businesses that you work with, during that time period, you, you, can, see, you can witness a significant amount of change in, in a business in terms of how, how they're utilizing different suppliers across different categories, how they're thinking about those purchases. So uh, it certainly indicates that you need to to really take a more frequent look at that, uh, uh, given the, the velocity of change. Yeah, that, that's a great point, especially for rapidly growing companies, uh, thinking of dot-coms and, you know, for example, a company, uh, e-commerce companies such as Groupon, where, you know, growth was so rapid, costs were largely un, uncontained for um, a, a period of time. Um, you know, I, I personally did a project in e-commerce, uh, and uh, a great example of that was within one year, the number of suppliers had grown from 1,000 to over 10,000 suppliers in one year. So the, the need to recategorize or remap the uh, the categories was uh, was definite. Absolutely, and and nevertheless, I know as we as we look at the the early returns here from our poll. Uh, Better than half, the, the majority uh, have not undertaken that exercise in the last 24 months. So certainly, I think your your experience would suggest uh, that not doing so more frequently will really have the potential to, to lead to more inaccurate data. Correct. All right, so let's move on. Uh, Regardless of whether you implement a, a procure-to-pay solution or not, these initial steps to improve your data can be taken. So the point is, get the data right at the point of requisition. So to start from top right, you know, first step is set your baseline spend, and then moving along the wheel, perform an audit to identify the gaps in baseline versus your vendor data and other sources. And often this can be done through category reviews with procurement and the business. Um, they very often have two different views of, of spend data and uh, combining it and, and agreeing to at least disagree uh, is always a good step. Next at the bottom, determine your gaps to ascertain your accuracy level given current requisition processes, systems, and tool limitations in training, followed by updating your categorization rules and developing a new baseline, and then developing training materials such as cheat sheets, uh, for each category and holding live or remote training sessions with all of the requisitioners. A best practice for cheat sheets to select uh, the right category and subcategory is uh, to put in, in wordings of if-then statements. Uh, that said, if you have a robust system in place, AI should take care of the need for frequent le lengthy trainings off the table, and at least in terms of assigning uh, a category to a, a transaction. So now, now that we've dus, uh, discussed why data accuracy is important, how to gauge your current level of accuracy, and how to fix it, the next logical question is how do you build a case for improving data accuracy? So quantifying the problem has been explained in the previous slides, but to recap, you gather and consolidate the data, cleanse the data, and quantify the incorrect categorization. Now, quantifying the problem and sorry, <laughs> quantifying and uh, qualifying the opportunity are two distinct steps. 
the problem being the dollar amount of miscategorization and the opportunity how much you could reduce internal and supplier costs through better management of accurate data. So for example, one company we worked with had $200 million in spend that was miscategorized. Working with finance sourcing in the business unit, we estimated the opportunity through driving, you know, for instance, uh, some of the spend to upper tiers of the SRM where there were bigger rebates and more favorable pricing, uh, we found the opportunity to be about $15 million. So this also take, uh, took into account one-off suppliers, meaning suppliers for materials and services that would never be purchased, uh, purchased again. So once the opportunity has been identified, the cost of pursuing that opportunity should be determined to build the cost benefit for change. And this can be based on internal resource costs, uh, outside consultants, software, et cetera. And on a side note, we typically use a five-year NPV to make a go, no-go decision. Of course, implementing the solution is where the rubber meets the road, so getting it right is critical. And finally, maintaining the process efficiencies and cost savings is accomplished through periodic monitoring and training. So I'm going to turn it back over to Richard now uh, so he can explain more about the benefits of a robust P2P spend analytics tool. Thanks so much, Sean. And I think you, you've really done a great job of, of laying the groundwork here with really a playbook for for a focus on on data in the sourcing and procurement, how to spot data issues, how to develop a strategy, uh, building the business case. And I want to just build upon that and, and embellish upon that a little bit further, you know, with an eye towards what's possible now with with automated spend analysis and, and P2P automation strategies. So clearly with a, a technology focus, and I think about, you know, just Again, segueing on what you just talked about with the business case, if I'm going to put together a business case, then specifically, let's say, for investing in uh, automation technology for spend analytics, um, how should I go about doing that? And, uh, you know, one of the first steps that, that's really helpful is to, uh, is to really look at, uh, first of all, a little bit of benchmarking. So what are other people doing, including, you know, what I would consider peer companies in my space, uh, because peer pressure is a good motivator for change, as we all know. Um, so here's some data actually from a, a survey that we did at Zyka, it's called the Pulse of Procurement, and we sampled really on a global basis uh, hundreds of uh, procurement leaders and procurement professionals to try to get a sense of, to what extent have they adopted, number one, automated spend analytics tools, and number two, what's their level of satisfaction with those? And, and the conclusions were, 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 were very disparate in this regard, that we, we found actually a pretty high level of penetration for some form of automation tools. So nearly three-fourths of the respondents said they have some type of solution, another 15% said if they don't have it, they plan to invest in it. So it's very few that say they don't have any plans. So by and large, organizations are recognizing the need or have taken maybe baby steps towards uh, deploying an automated spend analytics solution. But when you look at their level of satisfaction, that's where we saw this discrepancy or disconnect here. Um, only 13%, so, so a very small minority, said they feel like they've, they've got a best-in-class or state-of-the-art tool. Most, in fact, felt they're, they're sort of in the middle of the curve or fully a third that were behind the curve. And when you look at the, the, the graph in the center, um, it really sort of points towards the reasons for the general level of dissatisfaction with, with the current spend analytics tools that they have in use in that for the most part, as opposed to a best of breed solution, most are relying on either what the incumbent ERP tool can provide them in terms of spend visibility, or they have some legacy or homegrown solutions that, that, that do some of that. Um, whereas only a third have adopted, you know, a, 
either a, a best of breed point solution for spend analytics or have it as part of a, a best of breed uh, source to pay suite of tools. So again, the takeaway, lots of users, but not all that usable and uh, lots of opportunity for improvement. And uh, you know, really kind of the starting point then for making a business case is to say, are we where we need to be? And the conclusion that most, uh, certainly in this survey reached, is that we're not yet uh, where we need to be in terms of having state-of-the-art capabilities. Um, the next step is sort of what's possible um, when you look at uh, what could we potentially achieve with deploying a, a best of breed tool for automated spend analytics. And this is some data that comes from uh, from Gartner where they looked at the correlation between uh, top performing sourcing and procurement organizations and the availability of very granular, accurate, and up-to-date spend visibility data. So on the left-hand side, it really looks at how data is, spend data is categorized according to the highest levels at the segment or family level, uh, whereas the most usable data is getting to what's called the level three or level four class or commodity, you know, ultimately true item level spend visibility. And, and in Gartner's research, they, they found that top performing organizations have accurate line item level, you know, that granular visibility for 95% of their spending. So clearly the, the vast majority, and, and the goal here really isn't to get 100%, uh, including all the dogs and cats on the long tail of spend, but if you've got 95% granular item level visibility, you're going to have a really good sense of how to formulate your strategic sourcing strategies, have that that uh, full visibility and, and power of that knowledge to really embed and infuse your, your, your overall sourcing strategies and category programs. Not only that, Gartner looked then at the frequency with which uh, these organizations are refreshing and updating that spend visibility data. So for the most part, um, you know, fully about three quarters of the organizations have spend data refreshed at least quarterly, if not more frequently. So you can see about 28% quarterly. 32% tends to be the, the most popular refresh frequency is monthly. And a significant portion doing it even more frequently, weekly or, or more frequently, depending on uh, the particular business case or, or, or model in that industry. So it really comes down to getting a very granular view of exactly what's being purchased at an item level that's accurately categorized and having that data constantly refreshed and up to date. So I know we asked about um, updating the, the classification tree within the last 24 months. So again, top performing organizations are looking at spend data and refreshing it uh, at least quarterly, if not more frequently. So that, that's another way to kind of set the bar or benchmark against what's going on in the market when putting together a business case and say, if we don't have access to that level of visibility with the same frequency, then we'd be at a competitive disadvantage. Uh, and the last part of, of building a business case is obviously quantifying the results. And uh, there are a number of different benefits to be gleaned from spend visibility, starting with, with actual negotiate, negotiated cost savings, but it can ripple into a variety of other things like tracking compliance, uh, capturing rebates, uh, standardizing payment terms, something as seemingly simple as that can have a dramatic quantifiable benefit. And the fact of the matter is that uh, the most compelling business cases really don't look at spend analytics as, as a sort of an island of automation, but as a means to an end. The means, the means to the end being how do we capture a full source to pay uh, transformation and optimize the benefits across that process continuum. So when we take a look at the, 
of this type of analysis put together by Art and Partners in their report from last year, CPO Rising 2015, the Agility Agenda, uh, the, all of the potential benefits that you may want to quantify as part of a, a business case for uh, you know, procurement transformation, it really starts with spend. That's step one, and, and just the being able to identify an incremental improvement from a savings standpoint that those companies that are leveraging spend analytics tools into their sourcing process average 24 to 41% more savings per project. And again, that's the, just the starting point, those ripple effects then the cumulative benefits of source to pay would not be fully realized without effective spend analytics on the front end and at the outset. So that's the first story I wanted to tell. The, the second scenario here really delves into a little bit more about automated spend analytics and how does it work? You know, what's, let's demystify this process a little bit. And um, when you look at it from a process standpoint, you know, spend data analytics, um, it's a lot like the steps that, uh, you know, that, that Sean has already identified um, with the having data um, collection, normalization, and then some remediation or the data mend, as you mentioned, Sean. And I think that from a process standpoint, then, with an automated spend analytics tool, it follows those steps, uh, hopefully with some added efficiency and benefits. So the first step of data collection, uh, we know that that task is made ever more challenging by the proliferation of different back-end systems. So most organizations will find that they have multi multiple disparate ERP systems, for example. And even the ERP system is only one potential source of spend data. They've got other spend going through T&E systems, through, uh, you know, uh, P card spend, whole host of sources of data. So step one with automating the spend analytics process is uh, what we, the acronym would be ETL, but data extraction, transformation, and loading. So automating that data collection process in the first step, and then being able to use um, the tools built into an artificial intelligence or machine learning algorithm to leverage the computing power of the technology to go through that n data normalization, cleansing, and classification process to really clean and enrich and improve upon that data, and then ultimately to be able to present uh, to the user, to the procurement organization, the patterns and trends, the insights that come out of that data by highlighting specific savings opportunities uh, in a given category, for instance, where you, you can very quickly identify patterns such as highly fragmented spend across too many suppliers, where you don't have the, that consolidation that you're looking for where you know, maybe 20% or less of the suppliers account for 80% for of the spend volume. So really being able to, to leverage um, kind of the cognitive capability of the systems to prioritize savings opportunities so that they can be executed upon very quickly. So that, that's step one. I wanted to just kind of show then, okay, how does it work? And I'll start with the before picture here, probably not that un uncommon for, for many of uh, those in the audience today is that the before picture of data is that it's, uh, it's very cryptic, inaccurate, incomplete, hard to, to really normalize and spot any meaningful trends, and that's because you've got these multiple disparate systems on the back end, so we see uh, multiple examples from different countries and the data is in different languages. Sometimes it has a full item description and part number, but sometimes it's very cryptic uh, and, and hard to understand. We may or may not have a material group or code assigned to those transactions. So, you know, really you're faced with the potential that, that we all have at one time or another of 
of garbage in to a data warehouse, creating garbage out, and um, you know, really being challenged by uh, all of these issues of dis disparate systems, lots of different languages, GL codes, et cetera, and at the end of the day, we're left guessing as to how to really interpret this data to make meaningful sourcing decisions around the category. So assume we're applying an automated spend analytics tool where we're pulling data from all these different back-end systems, but then running it through an engine to normalize, classify, you use the artificial intelligence in the tools to be able to cleanse and enrich that information. So how it works from an after standpoint is applying the automated spend analytics tools, you have the ability to look at a knowledge base of information. So you, certainly when you're looking at purchases uh, such as represented here, which happens to be notebook computers, um, lots of other organizations, practically everyone buys the same thing. So a knowledge base that's seen um, different combinations of item descriptions and can parse multiple clues out of that data. So if I don't have a full description, but I know who the supplier name is, and I could, I could look at the GL code that's been charged and apply those inferences, if you will, uh, with a high degree of confidence to the data, then the system can automatically assign the correct category code. And in this case, after applying that data transformation through the spend analytics process, you come to find that each of these purchases was actually for the same type of item, in fact, a notebook computer. So now I can aggregate all the spending at that very finite, granular level of, uh, of categorization, the item level, to really identify the best savings opportunity. So I'm going to get uh, quality data output on the back end. It's going to leverage these statistical models and techniques, that artificial intelligence, to not only create a much higher level of accuracy in assigning the categorization, but be able to um, provide that kind of throughput uh, very quickly so that the information is not only accurate, it's timely so that I can act on it effectively and really drive the highest level of return on investment. And just to bring the point home a, a little bit more specifically, we talked about multiple levels of categorization, level one, level two, three, and four. And for most different product families or segments, at the highest level, um, the, the data that gets produced is not that meaningful. It's not that actionable. So we've got a variety of different categories represented here, but just sort of in the center, if we looked at IT as a category, we know that IT spending can encompass all manner of hardware products, software products, and services spend, so very diverse set of categories, which at that top level, IT spending is you know, virtually meaningless. Even computer equipment represents such a broad range and assort, assortment of products and peripherals as, as to be not terribly actionable, but driving down to the point where you get to ultimately to a level four to understand, oh, this is a computer workstation. It's not a mobile phone. It's not a monitor. It's not a mouse. It's a computer workstation. How do I then develop that category strategy, having full visibility and knowledge to actually what's being spent. So that kind of gives you a sense of the power of the tools and getting the full insights from those tools. Uh, but again, I would stress this is kind of the way spend analytics has been done historically, which is to say after the fact, mending or remediating the problems uh, that were caused at the at the source, which is when the transaction was created uh, up front in the process. And I wanted to talk about really, I think, one of the most exciting opportunities in the area of data integrity and data analysis, which is the evolution of, of the tools and the technologies to start to apply it 
at the source to get the data right from the beginning. And that's the case for P2P automation. And just to kind of walk through, uh, again, what's, what's achievable, what's possible, what's best in class, uh, here's some data from the Hackett Group's 2015 uh, P2P performance study that, that again, creates a, a clear correlation between the availability and accuracy of granular data and top performing capability in the area of procure to pay. So the top performers uh, on average have almost twice as much line item level spend visibility, about 73% of the spend for a top performer versus only 38% on average. Um, so the, the average organization today, when they look at their procure to pay process, has, has less than 50% of their spend, so in fact only 38%, where they can really accurately identify what's being purchased at a line item or transaction level. So some of the best practices in this area. Uh, the first one is how do I build the intelligence into the P2P system itself to get clean data right the first time, which then means I'm going to have spend data available in real time. So one of the other limitations of the sort of after-the-fact approach to spend analytics is there's always going to be some lag between when the data is consolidated, when the books are closed, when the data is collected or extracted, and then uh, then the lag time taken to clean that data, transform it, and, and normalize it, et cetera. Here the potential is having real-time spend analytics as requisitions and POs are being created in, in the, in the uh, procure-to-pay cycle itself. So that's really exciting about having not only accurate data right the first time, but right in real-time. And really one of the best ways to do that is how do I rely on or build in artificial intelligence instead of having to rely on natural intelligence of end users. So this is where the process goes wrong in so many cases is that in a P2P instance in particular, uh, end users could potentially be anyone in the business. So they're certainly not trained procurement professionals. Uh, left to their own devices, they may be guessing about what the correct categorization is of a particular requisition. I know at Zykus, for instance, we worked with uh, you know, one, one of the largest uh, industrial companies in the world and looked at their spend data uh, do, doing the analytics and found that on their indirect side, uh, coming out of, the, out of their P2P process, their largest spend category uh, turned out to be live plants and animals, for example. And of course, this was a, you know, an, an industrial company that uh, that really had no no reason to be uh, making expenditures in that area, and came to find out that in their requisitioning process, users were presented with a drop-down list from the UNSPSC category, so the United Nations Standard Products and Services Code. And that happens to be the first one in the menu, live plants and animals. So end users that are not trained, who are, you know, frankly disinterested uh, necessarily in, in, in having to apply the correct category code, simply pick the first one in the list and complete the requisition and I'm done. So just a, an example of how the, the process can go wrong when you have to rely on the, the end user's natural intelligence. A best practice here is use the AI tool to assign the correct category. From there, you can ensure that the category code is mapped to the correct GL code, that it's the budget codes are properly assigned, really ensuring data accuracy and integrity at the source. So just to kind of walk you through a process example of, of how that works and, you know, sort of from a Six Sigma standpoint, when you do a process analysis is where are the opportunities for defects? And unfortunately, there are a number of opportunities for defects when you look at the requisition 
and ordering process, you know, across procure to pay. And, you know, in a statistical analysis like Six Sigma, it only takes about three. Uh, you can only withstand about three defects per million opportunities to, to achieve a Six Sigma level. So pretty daunting challenge in this process as you look at you're really starting with an end user going to search for vendors, so you hope that they're only searching approved contracted vendors to begin with and that they're only going to be presented with contracted negotiated items and pricing. And from there, when they place the item in the cart, assigning the correct category codes. I've already made the case for, for using an artificial intelligence built into the system so that the user doesn't have to guess at that. Um, but then also um, from there, the category code gets mapped to the GL code. So getting it right the first time, getting the right category is going to be key to ensuring uh, that, that the accounting, the, uh, the posting of that transaction to the GL is done properly as well along with uh, assigning it to the correct budget code and tracking uh, budget utilization appropriately. Uh, one of the fail-safes to build into this or safeguards to build into the system then is being able to ensure that you're applying a workflow approval and review process at the line item level so that the people with the knowledge of the of the, that purchase transaction are reviewing and assuring that the, the system has assigned the correct category and, and subsequent coding correctly as well. So that as, as this flows through, at the end of the day, you've got the lines on the PO that, that are correctly coded and classified matched to the, uh, in a three-way match to the invoice and the good receipt. And at the end of the process, you've got accurate and granular spend visibility. When we talk about procure to pay, it all starts with search. That's sort of the, the moment of truth when a user logs in, and that moment of truth is whether or not the user can find what they're looking for efficiently. And one of the challenges here is that the traditional model around search has been based on a keyword search. So just to highlight some of the challenges, if I put in a search term like blade, uh, I may be looking for and I could get search results from a keyword search uh, for cutting tools or servers or uh, surgical instruments or even roller skates or roller blades. So, so one of the best practices here is, again, build the intelligence into the system right at the initial search so that uh, based on a, the end user's natural language search term, uh, the artificial intelligence in the tool will automatically classify it to the relevant category and therefore present the user only with relevant search results and ensure that that search that get, that, that's completed and item placed in the cart has the correct category code assigned right from the very beginning. And this really comes to fruition when you get to the checkout page. So the idea of a no-guess express checkout where all of the information for an end user has been defaulted. So they don't have to think about or guess at um, how do I assign a category code, what's the GL code, what's the ship to or bill to information. That's all automatically uh, derived uh, based on the intelligence built into the P2P tool. So, that really points out uh, in, in that study, uh, Sean, I think uh, the, the, the at least two-pronged approach that, that we'd often recommend to a lot of organizations is, number one, you have to deal with historical data integrity issues, and certainly there's a lot of benefit to be gained by applying the latest state-of-the-art automated spend analytics tools to look at historical spending to keep that data refreshed on an ongoing basis. But the, to combine that approach, I think, with uh, a strategy to focus on data at the source and data integrity from the outset with full P2P automation to progressively get better and better uh, real-time analytics built into the P2P system as well. So I think uh, like to turn it back to you, Sean, just to kind of pull together uh, some of those threads that we've talked about today 
and, and recap some of those key themes. Right. So let's recap some of those uh, main points that we discussed today. So number one, do you know how accurate your data is? Uh, it's a, always the first question we ask. And could you support your figures accurately or objectively at least? Number two, think about the pitfalls. Uh, decreased trust and involvement with the business, inefficient use of resources, lost savings opportunities are all common, and most everyone has one or more of these issues, as we saw from the survey, uh, survey as well. Uh, third, clean up your data and then perform periodic audits to ensure your systems and processes are supporting accurate data. With robust processes supported by a robust system, particularly one with AI, you will see decreasing issues with spend data accuracy. Next, building a business case for change is really a cost-benefit analysis, and in practice, you would really have to work hard at it to produce a no-go decision. Also, use your data to the max to allocate your internal resources properly. Choose the best uh, sourcing strategies and generate uh, greater savings. As Richard mentioned uh, previously, best-in-class procurement organizations use their data to support the uh, achievement of maximum savings. Sixth, AI takes away the guesswork with categorization and classification. Not some of the guesswork, but I would say pretty much all of it. And that said, remember point three, you should still perform periodic audits. Spend detail can also unlock tremendous value in negotiations, and you need to use it to your advantage. And finally, a best of breed tool will have a pre-populated checkout and search function that will help reduce errors and rogue spend. And with that, I'll turn it over to Rohit to open the discussion up to questions from the participants. Hey. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Richard. Uh, we do have uh, uh, a few questions coming in. And uh, this first one is actually for you, uh, Sean. And uh, uh, the attendee basically wants to know how much spend is enough to make a P2P solution worthwhile? Uh, good question. Um, I would put it a little bit differently, though. Um, and I hate to say it depends, but it does depend. Um, so the question really isn't about the amount of spend. Uh, but the le level of data complexity. So I'll give you an example of um, a company that has about a billion dollars in spend, um, but they only operate in the U.S., so there's no currency or geography elements to account for, and they only have one product. Um, so basically, it's not a real complex set of data, um, it, although it's very large, and therefore, it, quite honestly, they could really manage it by spreadsheet. And now as they launch additional services and products, it's likely uh, that they will need a, a more robust tool. Uh, they also have plans to open up in different geographies. So taking into account some of the, uh, the international elements, uh, you know, currency fluctuations and so forth, um, I think they will be investing in, in a uh, tool pretty soon. Okay. Uh uh, the next question is uh, around, uh, you know, the source of spend data, and this is for you, Richard. It, it, it's basically asking, what are the sources of spend data, and how can I aggregate to get a single consolidated view of spending? Yeah, great question, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's one of the, the big drivers for automating spend analytics is, just as Sean mentioned, it's, it starts with complexity. So when you look at data sources, you know, we're often working with organizations that may have several, I've, it's, I've, it's not unheard of to have dozens of ERP systems. So that's just the starting point, right? So it's this proliferation of, of data sources and that's just core ERP. So then you add to that, you know, as I think I mentioned earlier, any spend that's going through other systems like T&E or P-card spend and so on. So having so many disparate systems really makes it almost impossible to have one single version of the truth uh, without being able to extract that data, put it through a data normalization cleansing enrichment process like in, in, in the spend analytics automation that we talked about, to then be able to have one version of the truth, one aggregated uh, view of the data, so I think it's 
you know, just as Sean said, there, there are some cases where the complexity is not there, but certainly what we found is most businesses are are really suffering through this this complexity right now and, and have really identified the need for a better way to go about it. Great. Uh, Sean, here's an interesting question. You know, uh, you know, the attendee basically wants to know, uh, can you provide a concrete example of how better data will help me choose which sourcing strategy to pursue? So it could be something like a reverse auction or an RFP. So, you know, what's your thought on that? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, so let's uh, give an example of that. Let's say, for instance, you have multiple suppliers doing the same thing or providing substitutes, commodity type uh, products. You might want to consider a reverse auction. Um, whereas if you're, you look at your data and it's, it's looking very accurate and you have a really long tail in a given category, you may want to rationalize the supply base and drive a lot of that spend to preferred suppliers. Um, and potentially open up a uh, our RFP with those preferred suppliers. Okay, that's, not, that's great. Uh, uh, Richard, here's one for you, and uh, we're about uh, to end this one. So uh, this one is basically uh, talking more from a point of view of spend analytics refresh. So what is the best practice with regard to how frequently spend analytics are refreshed? Yeah, and I did cover some of that for in terms of the Gartner data where they showed that, you know, most organizations today um, with the benefit of automated spend analytics tools have increased the frequency. So in the past, um, if it, this were an entirely manual effort, uh, you know, a lot of organizations had no other choice than to, than to do it as kind of an annual exercise at best just because it was so manpower you know, and labor intensive, uh, but with the availability of automated spend analytics tools, I think the best practice has, has really uh, sort of li uh, lined up at, a, at around monthly. I think that's sort of the standard that's emerged in the space, but some use cases or business cases to support um, more frequent refreshes as well. And the other thing, you know, that, that I mentioned that, uh, in the discussion around P2P automation is what's so exciting is the potential to get real-time spend analytics. So um, really being able to capture when you have that confidence in transaction level accuracy at the source coming through P2P, you can have the benefit of real-time spend visibility, which means really being able to take immediate action on trends in spending, you know, increased volumes with potentially new suppliers or new categories, really capitalizing that on very on that very quickly to negotiate uh, the best agreements, for example. Uh, so, so the answer is uh, the best practice is getting data more and more like real time to make real time business decisions. And Rohit, I, I would mention too that uh, I know we have this graphic up here on the, for those who may be joining us in the greater New York metropolitan area, um, you know, we have a, a very compelling event, CPO Connect in New York coming up on the 5th of April. And uh, for, for those uh, interested in registering, they see the information here. But, you know, much like today's session, uh, that event, uh, We'll, we'll highlight some of the, the best practices and best thinking uh, going on in the sourcing and procurement space. So a real opportunity to network and collaborate and uh, share uh, some best practices and learnings across the, uh, the marketplace.
So with that, Richard, I guess um, we can uh, wrap up our discussion and thank you for everyone that participated today. Any final thoughts, Richard? No, thank, thanks so much, Sean. Really enjoyed it. I think uh, the, the final thought is everyone's challenged with, with data issues, but uh, you know, hopefully uh, our objective today was to, to uh, provide a, a ray of sunshine, I think, a little bit of hope, some, some best practice strategies and techniques, way to, ways to think about the data challenge and some, uh, some opportunities to really get ahead of that curve. So thanks to everyone for participating. Thank you. Bye-bye.